Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Irongo Talk. My name is Leandre Hello and today I join you from the Paddo Gardens here in Swakopmund. Now it's a very cool day in Swakopmund. The heat has finally left us. Now as usual I bring you the latest news, weather and tides and for our interview, Governor of Irongo Region, that is Neville Andre, talks about the importance and the benefits of urban agriculture. So please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. And now it is time for your news and we kick off with something in Afrikaans. Now, nog salani in Pregilir in Pregilo, nog die ministerie van Landbouw, Water en Grondverforming het tot nou bekend gemaakt wat van wat vrijdag door die oorstroming by die pompstasie van die Nektaraldam geleid het. Verskye fotos van water in die pompstasie het op sy sosiale media circuleer met beweringe dat die skade genage nog 20 miljoen mobiese dollar beloop. Nou die pompstasie maak deel uit van die waterlever in stelsel vir die besproeiing schema by die Nektaraldam. Dit is nog nie dier die kontrakteer van die dam Salini in Pregilo en nam water oorhandig nie het bron aan Republikein gesê. Nou volgens die bron is die situasie onder Hier, die ministerie het nog nie op een script op een skriftelige navraag hier oor reageer nie. Rouwwater is daar ongeveer 30 kilometer stroom af van die dam vir die besproeiingsschema onttrek word. Nou, um, please check out our social media pages for some updates on that. Now, moving on. Now, according to the Namibian Ports Authority, Namport, cargo handling volumes increased despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the overall cargo volumes handled at both the Namibian ports increased by um, 633 tons, that's 11%, in comparison to the previous financial year, which is 1 April 2019 to 31 March 2020. Now, the TEUs, that's containerized boxes, handled over the year ended 31 March 2021 increased year on year by 7,338 TEUs, that's about um, 5% on the back of increased transshipment volumes. Now Namport um, ascribed the surge of transshipment volumes to the disruption in carrier networks resulting in vessels being rerouted to the port of Warfish Bay. Now the bulk and break volumes also increased by 498,000 um, tons, that's 14% in comparison to the previous financial year which is 1 April 2019 to 30 March 2020. Now the commodities which recorded the largest increases are copper, charcoal, bagged salt, fish and fish products, petroleum, wheat, vehicles, sulfur and manganese ore. Overall, we remain positive but um, about the medium to long term prospects of the business. And the Port Authority said that it anticipates the growth trajectory to remain for a while premised on focused marketing efforts, operational efficiency enhancement, and the containment of costs. But you can read more on that story on our website. That's at www.irongo.com.na. And then finally, um, KO is erupted at a Warfish Bay Ordinary Council meeting of the newly elected council re recommended that the new set of members serve on various internal committees and external institutions until 2025. Now, one of the issues in question is serving on the Irongo Red Board of Directors. Now, a similar situation also transpired here at the Warfish Bay, at the Swakopmund um, Council. Now, Council resolved to um, recall its candidate kind of membership, a member representatives and their alternatives, and resolved that the management committee chairperson Leroy Victor and his alternate Ronald Bramwell, Richard Haup, and his alternate Olivia Andrews serve on the Irongo Red Board. This did not sell well with Polis, um, Councillor Polis Kawandamwa, who said that he does not support the recalling of councillors, saying that, he should, that they should be allowed to complete their term. He also implied that Victor who is recommended to serve on various internal and external committees cannot be the referee, player and the goalie. Now we must abide by the Local Authority Act and not misread or misinterpret it. We must follow the correct procedures, Kawandamwa said. Now, um, Wobbish Bay Mayor Trevino um, Forbes reminded Kawandamwa that he had received the council agenda 72 hours before the meeting and had ample time to raise any disputes. Now, Albertina and Koshi, also a Swapo councillor, recused herself from serving on any of the committees, saying that you have taken resolution 
resolutions and made recommendations with us without us again now according to the council agenda there are four parts for councillors to consider there is internal committees representation of external bodies fixed representation due to, representation due to office held by councillors and external institutions where representation is by virtue of the office that a council member of official holds through other external opportunities but you can check out the story on our website that's at www.irongo com.na where you can read about who is going to serve on the various internal and external um, institutions and committees but that is our news for today but please check out our website that's www.irongo.com.na for all the latest news happening right here in the Irongo region I'd say that, um, and somebody was actually saying that, yeah, Honorable Governor, how are you? Ever since you took the COVID uh, vaccine, are you fine? I'm very alive. I'm very alive in the kitchen. I want to encourage you to also take the COVID vaccine because I'm feeling much better and I feel just proud and energetic that, uh, as I said, I'm part of the warriors or the warriors or soldiers to fight the COVID-19. Um, so we'll, let's do it together. So I just want to, on that note, um, just encourage all of us to take that fight. It is very important. I first want to really thank, you want to... I will not bring it back. <laughs> repossessed. I first want to really thank the, the initiative or the co-founders for bringing this initiative to the school. I see it is a school for the pioneers and when they see an initiative like that one in terms of uh, urban agriculture, you see them also wanting to take the battery just had to die on me. <laughs> I was saying that you see these young ones also wanting to do the same at their houses. And that is exactly the, 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 the example that we are giving to the young ones. Um, and I'm very happy that it, has be, had been, uh, it is being uh, launched at the primary school. So, the Commissioner uh, Kamonga, please uh, thank you very much for the initiative that you have taken. Um, this is a great initiative. Please um, keep on that. Keep on doing good on that one. I also want to say that the mayors and the councillors that are here today, please take leadership in this initiative of really bringing urban agriculture to your society. We need our leaders to really drive this process or this initiative and it will be very much good to to see it in all the towns in Sakopun, I mean in Arongo region. So thank you very much. The United Nations system, you always assist government to stretch its hand where it cannot reach, especially those that are less privileged. So thank you very much for always um, stretching government's 
arm to the less privileged people and always being there to work in partnership with government. So thank you very much. Coca-Cola. You know, uh, one thing and we, uh, we had a small discussion is that what you are doing, you know, this thing of just sponsoring and not really, uh, as long as you sponsor, you sponsor something, you, you feel okay. But what you did is that you are sponsoring to make a, an impact to the people's lives. And that is what's supposed to be in terms of when you sponsor something, not just to give, but what is the sponsor, sponsorship or what you are sponsoring, uh, making to the difference or making to the impact of our people. And this is again what you're doing. Thank you very much. And it will surely change people's lives. Thank you very much for that. Uh, great uh, uh, support to the less privileged who really need that, that support. Now, according to United Nations and food scientists, it is said that by 2050, the world would need to produce more than 70% of food, specifically because the world is growing in terms of population. By 2050, we'll be having more than uh, 2 billion people. And those people are mostly in the urban areas. And that is what uh, we are told that uh, we we'll need to do more in terms of uh, urban agriculture or bringing uh, uh, food to our urban areas. But to do that, we need to improve our farming practices and modernize it and also to minimize food waste. That will address the challenge that you are seeing as the people are growing faster and faster in the urban areas. And surely in, in our government, specifically the president, when he was integrated in 2015, he declared an all-out war on poverty, hunger, and inequality. When he said that, that set, a, 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 that set an agenda of uh, zero hunger in Namibia so that we can tackle the issue of zero hunger in Namibia. And of course, we have been seeing throughout the administration of, of, of uh, the president that he prioritized the poverty eradication uh, reduction of inequality and, and disparities, sustainable economic growth and economic diversification, and job creation and improved service delivery. Now, this again was also seen when in 2015 the world leaders met in uh, United, I mean, at, uh, in New York at the United Nations sustainable development goals when it was launched. Our government embarked on a, a mission to end hunger in Namibia by launching the Zero Hunger Strategic Review. And this, of course, it was aimed, or the purpose of this strategic review was to look at where we are as a country in terms of achieving food and nutrition security. Furthermore, we also see that in Namibia there is a growing recognition that the vision of zero hunger cannot be realized unless we address the issue of urban food insecurity. Because surely poor urban households are facing a lot of pressure. And that pressure is we are seeing more high food prices in our urban areas. We see a high rate of unemployment. We see a limited basic services to the poor in the, the urban areas and poor infrastructures and, over, and overcrowdedness. Of course, although it is known or it is uh, always said that Food, uh, 
sufficient food is available in urban areas, but the reality is that it is not it is not available to all, and those that do not have that uh, availability to buy food or to get food needs to be given that opportunity. In the past, it has always been said that, um, or it, in the past, development was always taken to rural areas to look at food insecurity, but that assumption that uh, there is no food insecurity in urban areas is, I think, getting outdated. We need, as you are seeing, to look at our urban areas. We have seen also the commitment by government under the Harambe Prosperity Plan that urban food security is emerging as a developmental priority. And government with other um, stakeholders, uh, partners, like uh, the uh, WFP and the FAO has put measures in place to reduce food gap that exists in urban areas. For us in, in Erawa region, it, is, it was evident when the COVID-19 outbreak started, we have seen a lockdown, not only in the region, but we also saw the borders closing down. The borders were closed, and that really showed our vulnerability to the urban households. I remember during the, the food distribution that we had during the, 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 the COVID-19, people were so happy just to get that food ration. People in urban areas, people were crying for that food parcel that they got. And that really showed us that we really need to assist and to give food in the urban areas because there are people that really need it. So that exposed the need of food in urban areas. Hence, the importance of building food secure urban households is as important as building food secure households in rural areas. Being one of the sources of supply to urban uh, food uh, system, urban agriculture is one of the means to make productive use of urban open space. I always say that, and it's good that we are um, in a less privileged society, in terms of uh, the people with less uh, that are less privileged, is that let us get into the culture of changing from a backyard shed to a backyard garden so that we feed ourselves at the backyard and not use the space only to put checks which for sure sometimes are not hygienic and are also not uh, good for our, uh, for, for, for our hygiene. Urban agriculture is also used to recover and treat urban li uh, liquid and solid waste and ultimately it contributes to creation of employment, generating income and management of fresh water in our resources uh, that, 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 that we provide the, 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 the water to our community. But for us to really properly, I mean if we properly manage the urban agriculture there are many contributions that we'll see. I've sort of identified three of them. One is the quality of food availability that will increase in our society, where we see that our poor urban dwellers will have adequate amount of food. And it, of course, it was mentioned by our colleagues um, uh, before me. Secondly, it also enhances the freshness of perishable food. Of course, the mayor mentioned that she now only needs to go at the back of her house to get fresh 
vegetables. Not to go to the market where that specific uh, vegetable was there for two or three days. But you have it fresh from your backyard. So it is one of the contributions that you able to have fresh, perishable food at our disposal. And the third is the opportunity of productive employment for ourselves. I think, um, and I was actually saying to the mayor when I said, I'll come and get my tomatoes. Basically, I was saying, I'll come and buy my tomatoes from you. Thank you. So they can also, um, when you have your backyard, you can also increase or have a income to your, uh, to your household, which you can use it for other means that are important, which of course Manfred also alluded to. Now, surely, other than the available fresh and quality food in our local neighborhood, we also see that agricultural um, growth or the, the, the backyard gardens will also contribute in developing a resilient communi community through capacity building in different ways. This is now, for example, provision of income, ownership, inclusive inclusiveness. People will feel included, inclusive, when really they see that, and also good health, will start having um, good health in our society when we are really given that opportunity to grow our own. Lastly, what I want to, to urge all corporates is to include urban agriculture in their corporate social investment strategies to address and to assist our national development goals so that we are also a, a society that is more resilient in difficult circumstances like we are seeing today. I want also to mention to those that are beneficiaries to this project, please use it. It is an opportunity that you are given. Others' opportunity will depend on how you are using this opportunity you are given. If the project is successful, sponsorships like uh, Coca-Cola Namibia and also the United Nations system will see the need to roll it out to other uh, society or members of the community. So you are the ones that should lead this example to show that this project that those that have supported us should be successful and you are, you are going to look after it carefully and you are, making, you are going to make a, a good outcome out of this, uh, uh, the, out of this uh, uh, assistance. And also to show that as Sarko Fund or as people of Erongo, you appreciate the little resources that has been given to you. So I want to congratulate you first and also to say, please keep it up. Let us have this a successful project where others can really see, really we need more of this.
And now it is time for your weather and tides for all the major towns here in the Irongo region. Unfortunately, that brings us to the end of today's episode of Irongo Talk, but you can always check out our website, that's at www.irongo.com.na, that's www.irongo.com.na. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram, and you can get in contact with us at 011-7040, that's 011-7040, on both WhatsApp and Telegram. That's also your go-to number if you want to advertise with us, you can contact us at 011-7040, that's 011-7040. Now please remember, we still find ourselves in a pandemic, so always wear your mask, keep your social distance, and at all times sanitize your hands. The only way we can kick COVID out of Namibia is if we take care of ourselves. So we will see you again tomorrow same time different place but until then it's goodbye for now